Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson, uh, still out with my youth. But I wanted to answer some questions that keep coming up. So I hope that you're getting this. We're going to talk about uh, the Antichrist, the, the Tribulation, and the Rapture. Now, I've shared before, so I'm not going to go into great detail on the videos, about the harpazo, the catching away. The rapture is in 1 Thessalonians 4, um, 13 to 18. It's also in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 53. It talks about the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise. Then those of us who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the air. And we will forever be with the Lord. And we are told to encourage one another with that. That's that's imminent that will happen also when you look at first corinthians 15 it talks about in the twinkling of an eye also revelation i'm going to give you scripture references so you may want to write these down because i i don't have time to go into great great detail revelation chapter 4 verse 1 it it refers to when john the revelator was called up and then the lord says and all these things come to pass so the church is called out and passes through the open door. That's talking about the harpazo, the rapture. That's right there in Revelation uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Then from Revelation chapter 5 to verse 19, we have the description of the whole of Daniel's 70th weeks, which covers the end times of this dispensation. Now, I'm going to be um, sharing some things. There's, a, there's an author, a, a theologian, Clarence Larkin, that I recommend if you want to get into detail. Great book to get. He has one on Daniel, one on Revelation. I don't have it with me, but I want to, I want to share some things with you. Now, when we go to Daniel 9, chap chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, that, so I'm giving you this reference, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Also, Jesus Olivet discourse is given in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 35, and then John's seals, trumpets, and vials in Revelation 6, chapter 6, verse 1, to Revelation 18, verse 24. They cover the same period. Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Matthew 24, 1 to 35, and Revelation 6, chapter 6, verse 1, um, to chapter 18, to verse 24, cover the same period. They are, they are to the Jewish people and have no reference to the body of Christ, the Christian church. We're, we're already out of here, so you need to know that. Remember, I've talked about 1 Corinthians 10, 32. We know that all of the Bible is for the believer, but not all of the Bible is about the believer. All scripture is inspired, and we know that. So, 1 Corinthians 10.32 says, Give no offense neither to the Jew, nor the nations, or the Gentiles, nor the church. That's the body of Christ. That's the ecclesia, the called out ones. So, those references I gave you from Daniel 9, 24 to 27, the Olivet Discourse and Revelation, basically when you get beyond chapter 5, to 19 it deals with the same period of time and it deals with the same people again all of the bible is for the believer but not all of the bible is about the believer so we're out of here um daniel's daniel draws the outline in his 70th week jesus fills in the picture in his Olivet Discourse, and John fills in the details in the book of Revelation. So those three references I gave you deal with the same period. What Daniel condenses in one verse, John enlarges to 13 chapters in the book of Revelation. I'm going to read for you from Daniel 9, 19 to 20. It says, Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sins of my people, Israel, and making my request to the Lord, my God, for his holy hill, or the Temple Mount. This is what Daniel was talking about. So then, from heaven comes Gabriel with God's plan for Israel, what God's going to do with Israel, 
And so I want to go then to Daniel 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up visions and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Seventy weeks of years would total 490 years. So what I want to talk to you about in regard to prophecy, I want you to think of a basketball game. It has four quarters, right? And there are time outs. So the clock stops. There are pauses in time and how God is dealing with his people Israel, because we're talking about Israel. And we are, when we talk about the tribulation, we're talking about the 70th week. So, he says there are 70 weeks, 77 weeks determined, right, to do these things. Now, I'm going to go from the Hebrew, from the actual art scrolls to the English, as I relay again what I just read to you. First of all, he says, it's to terminate their transgression. It will come to an end. This is Israel. To end sin, the whole sin, their whole sin, it will be completed. To bring this is what the word says, Daniel, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and this will come to them with the messianic kingdom. Fourth, to seal visions and prophecy. All prophecies will be fulfilled at that time. Again, I go back to, this isn't about the rapture, and this is where a lot of people get confused. I, and I think sometimes those of us who do it don't necessarily do a good enough job. We'll go from one to the other, we're excited, but there is a vast difference between the rapture of the harpazo, everything that has needed to happen, has happened for that, and the second coming when Christ's feet will land on the Mount of Olives, it will split into and he will, he will set up his messianic kingdom. He will take his rightful place on David's throne, his throne. And then fifth, to anoint the Holy of Holies. So, the, so what that's saying is the Jewish people will anoint the Holy of Holies in the millennial temple. Let's go on to verse 25. Know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. That, that's given us a period of 400, that's 69 weeks, or 483 years. So from the time Daniel was writing this, at the time of King Cyrus, when he was commanded, to, they were commanded to go back and rebuild the temple, 483 years, Messiah was going to come and be cut off. That's, that's what the word tells us. Sorry, that was a blip on my screen. Let's go on to verse 26. And after three scores and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So the prince... This is talking about the revival of the old Roman Empire. The prince to come is the Antichrist, and he's going to operate off that old Roman Empire revived. Verse 27, he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. That Hebrew word is hebir, and it means he will confirm, ratify, make stronger. I've talked about this on videos. Some disagree and say it's not the peace plan. It could be what's going to come out with the with Jared Kushner, with Trump's peace plan, um, meaning that someone else could rise on the scene because we're going to be out of here. We're not going to know fully who the Antichrist is. I believe we see the false prophet and the Pope, but we may not know the rest. So, all of this is for dealing with the Jews on the earth and dealing with the nations on the earth. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 4 to 7, 
And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Whereof do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail. And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, that's Israel, but he shall be saved out of it. The word trouble, the Hebrew word is sar, it's T-S-A-R, and it means tribulation or a narrow place you are pressed into by outside pressure. The, so we go on to verse Jeremiah 30, verse Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 8. It's, it's me'amlo, me'amlo az is the Hebrew. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. So when we're given the example of a woman giving birth, we often think of the travail, if you've ever seen a woman giving birth, and I have, um, the, the birth pains are real, the, the contractions are real. And even though that's a very real thing, there's something else, there's a joy that's anticipated at the end. There's the birth of the baby and the, the joy. Often I, I, I've seen my own wife and I've seen some of my daughters, you know, after giving birth, the joy, it's almost like they, they forget, they don't even focus or talk about it because that anticipated joy. Well, in Israel, even though they go through these times and they have suffered as a people and a nation, there is an anticipation of Messiah coming. Now, we know prophetically that the Antichrist is going to deceive many, but that is their time. That tribulation period, Daniel 70th week, is the justification for Israel. It has nothing to do with the church. The day destined for Israel's joy, that's what's coming, and they know that. Also, it's believed before the second coming, there will be a king who will reign, who is more evil than the evil Haman, what are we coming up to, March 20th and 21? Purim, the celebration of that. You go back to the book of Esther and you read about Haman. Well, the rabbis, these, these religious leaders in Israel of Judaism, they believe, they, they know, they know that there's going to be one that comes even more evil. And so they're looking for that. Another reference, maybe Daniel 12, 1. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention today because I think so many get so confused with the timing of the rapture and mixing the rapture with the, um, with the second coming of Christ, and it's easy to do that. So when you look at um, what I told you, Daniel 9, 24 to 27, and Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse, and you're looking at the Revelation 6, 1 to Revelation 18, 24, that, let's settle it right now when we move forward because I'm doing these Bible studies and we're going to be studying prophecy. That is dealing with the Jewish people. And praise God, those who are part of the body of Christ, the, the ecclesia, the called out ones, whether you're from, from uh, Israel, whether you're Jewish or whether you are from the nations, a Gentile, we become a new creation. In fact, I don't identify as Jewish or Gentile. I am a, I am a kingdom citizen, hallelujah. I am an heir of God and co-heir with Christ Jesus. I pray that this helps you understand and, and you can think as you move forward, okay, yeah, there's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. And let's settle this once and for all. Those passages from Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Matthew 24 on the Olivet Discourse and Revelation chapter 6, 1, all the way through 18, 24 is dealing with the Jewish people. I hope that blesses you and, and I want to tell you God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Have an awesome rest of your day.